Hello pianists! Today I will demonstrate how to learn a beginning piano piece published by Bella Bartok back in 1913 from his first term at the piano. I'll talk through a musical learning pyramid that I created which talks you through the steps of how to approach the rhythm, the notes, the articulation, the dynamics, and finally the style and mood of the music. We'll utilize some previous skills that we've learned in videos of landmark notes and intervals, how to play slurred, how to play with dynamics, and with good technique as well. So we'll look at our Bartok piece, number two, titled Walking. This is in public domain, so you can find this and also see it on the screen as well. So I think about learning as a pyramid. The bottom foundation of almost all music is rhythm. Knowing the time signature, keeping the music steady. You cannot express the style and mood of the music if you're not keeping your music steady or perhaps the notes are incorrect. So the bottom foundations have to be solid before you build on to the foundation above it. And then it creates a beautiful piece. So we're going to begin by looking at the bottom level of our pyramid of rhythm. Notice I wrote time signature as the first thing to check out. The time signature is at the beginning of your music. This one is 4-4. Four, four. What that tells me is there are four quarter notes in each measure, which the first measure beautifully demonstrates of four quarter notes. I look at my fastest note values, which in this simple piece is just quarter notes to know how I need to count. So I can count this as 1, 2, 3, 4. Also you want to look for repetitive rhythmic patterns. That way you relate it to patterns you've already played before, like your scales. I see I have groupings of four quarter notes, I have half notes and two quarter notes, and then a couple measures of full whole notes, which would be four beats. Before you actually try to play this piece, as a beginning pianist, I would highly suggest you try to tap it or clap it. So I'm going to pull down my fallboard on my Yamaha piano here, I'm going to tap this through. So if you need to, you can tap your foot if you're in band class, or if you don't have a good sense of beat yet, turn your metronome on. Notice it's marked 96. I'm going to turn my metronome on. Maybe that feels a little fast for tapping. You can always go slower than performance tempo when you're first learning pieces. So I turned it down to 84. I'm going to tap my hands. I'm going to count this rhythm out loud. One, two, ready, tap along. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hold your hands on hold half notes. Three, four. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three. Second line. One, two, three, four. 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 So before you play any notes, get the rhythm solid. Go through that several times until it feels really easy before you try to address the notes. Okay, let's go to our next level of our pyramid of the note reading. Let's look back at the signatures at the beginning of the piece. A key signature would be sharps or flats, or in this case, nothing, which represents C major. I always like to warm up in my key so I get to thinking of the pattern of notes that I'll be utilizing. So let's use our C five finger scale. I'm gonna use my good technique of my wrist circles. I'm playing in steps, which are seconds, skips, which are thirds and that blocked chord. So we've been building patterns, retrieve those patterns to help you read this music with success. Okay, once we've gone through a key signature and thinking in C major, we're gonna look for those landmark notes. So I look at my bass clef first, remember King Fred, and he has that second space of the bass clef, which is bass C, C3 on your piano. Put your five there. I also would scan through and look for my highest note to see, do I have to move my hand? I look through, it looks like about the fourth or fifth, fourth measure, I have a G. And that's as high as I get, so I'm going to stay within a fifth hand position. Look at your right hand. It's nice that those are both landmark notes. I have a treble C, which is C number five on your piano. So your hands are actually two octaves apart. Scan through for the right hand for its range. Looks like the highest note is also a fifth. Okay. Before you dive in with any plane, I scan through and see what kind of intervals do I have in this piece. Remember, space to line to space to line are a series of seconds, which is a scalar pattern. Look through, do you see anything that's beyond a second? No, it's all seconds. So all you have to watch for is the going up or down of the notes. All right, let's do our first run through. I'm gonna tap my foot so I keep it steady. Use your metronome if you want. We're gonna play this, we're gonna say up 
or down for the direction of the second. So let's go. One, two, ready, play. We start in C's, up a second, back down, one, two, down, goes up to D, one, two, down, three, four, up a second to D, up to that G, back down. to ease, two down, look ahead as you play, up to D, one, two, look ahead to the second, down, up, up, down, down, hold, two, three, four. So I would even pause the video right there and go back and go at your own pace to get that very solid Get it to where you can combine the bottom level of rhythm and note reading so it is correct in the notes and also steady as you play. Okay, once those layers are secure, let's go into the articulations. If I look through this piece, I notice I have those long lines which are called slurs. That tells me to play smooth and connected. But if I look through, I have four slurs. So it doesn't mean I need to keep it all connected. When a slur ends, that's the breath in the music. Slurs also indicate phrases or musical sentences. So if you have a pencil, I put a little comma when slurs in, that reminds you to breathe. And at the piano, let me demonstrate that. Two, three, four. Doesn't have to take much, but it's just a little lift just to separate those notes like there's a comma or a period in your playing. Okay, so let's play it through. I'm gonna ask you also to listen for that next layer of dynamics as you listen for those slur lifts. I see one dynamic marking of forte. Does that mean I should only play forte? Probably not. It means overall this piece should be at a louder level, but we like music to have inflection just like our voices do. So remember I said when music rises higher, we'll crescendo. When it goes lower, I'll day crescendo. So we're gonna apply that idea. So let's give it a shot. Go slower if you have to. We're going to crescendo ascending, day crescendo descending notes, slur lifts. One, two, ready. Play. I'm going to sneak in a little bit here, crescendoing, day crescendoing, two, three, lift, crescendo even more to the G, two, day crescendo, louder to the G, Crescendo to the F, the crescendo to the C, two, three, four. Now it's really starting to sound beautiful. Don't forget to use your technique of your wrist circles. You might have to play it again and say, all right, now I'm going to focus on making sure my dynamics are there and I'm using my wrist circles. So get those levels of the pyramid secure before you go on up. So we've addressed the dynamics. In the dynamics, there's also the option of voicing. Remember playing the melody louder than the accompaniment. Both hands are basically melody here. If I have two melodies, typically we'll voice out the higher hand of the right hand. There's where you can go back through. You can play left hand, silent play, right hand, nice and rich and loud. So let's just try that on our first three measures, right hand voiced, left hand silent. Once I can get that kind of control, play the left hand with a little weight, but quieter than the right hand. One. Two, ready, play. There we go. So we've addressed the phrase shaping, which is those crescendos and decrescendos, voicing. Not too many contrasts really add to this piece as we only have forte. The last fun step is the style and mood. This comes from a variety of parts. Looking at a title, if it's descriptive, Bartok says walking, that might be walking on an adventure, maybe it's a peaceful walk. Looking at the tempo marking of moderata, which means medium. I also have a metronome of 96, so that could suggest maybe what kind of feeling for this walk. Let's check out 96. Kind of a little quicker walk. Maybe a little louder to the G. This is going to be my loudest phrase to the G. I 
actually went off of the metronome. I slowed down just a little bit just to bring the piece to a close. So that's going through all of your steps. Use this pyramid to learn your own favorite pieces from the rhythm all the way to the style mood. Be patient to get those bottom layers secure before you try to express the piece. Thank you.